Oh, hello. I'm Olivier. Welcome back to my channel. I know it's been a while since my last upload, but, um, you know, I, I just finished college and considering everything, I have a lot more time on my hands and I am really excited to be making videos again. Today's video is going to be a comparison of three capless fountain pens that are on the market today. I've heard and seen a lot of questions on the internet about the new Platinum Curidas, um, which I got my hands on, uh, in comparison to the Pilot Vanishing Point and the Dialogue 3, who are both, you know, pretty well established capless fountain pens. So I'm going to be going over these three and kind of, you know, clarifying what advantages and disadvantages these different pens offer at their respective price points. So let's get right into it. All right, so let's check out these three capless fountain pens. Before I get into the differences between the three of them, I'd like to talk about their main feature similarity um, and why I'm making a video about the three of them. So by virtue of being capless pens, none of these pens have a traditional fountain pen design. They all have some kind of sealing mechanism that allows them to have a clickable or otherwise extendable nib out of the front. Um, this usually also means that the clip is going to be at the top where you grip the pen, which is obviously not very normal on a fountain pen. And the these three pens also all use cartridge converter mechanisms. Um, but past that point, that's kind of where the similarities end. So the main thing that these three pens have in common is the fact that they are capless, meaning that they do not have a traditional fountain pen style, you know, click on or clip, screw off cap. They have a way of extending the nib out the front of the barrel without having to, you know, take off a cap, which is great. Um, it's a cool, pretty uncommon feature. There are only a few on the market. And uh, it just makes them an interesting, uh, interesting comparison to each other because they are all in kind of different areas of the market. In terms of size, the Curiodos is actually the longest closed, then the vanishing point, and then the Dialogue 3 by just a hair. However, once they've been opened, it's kind of a different story. Um, being in part due to the Dialogue 3 having a full-size nib, and also it doesn't get any shorter when you click it. So that kind of does that. In terms of diameter, the Dialogue 3 is definitely the thickest um, at 13.6 millimeter diameter barrel, pretty chunky. The Curidas actually is pretty close to that. It's a 13.4, so also pretty thick pen um, with some interesting kind of obstructions, um, which I'll get to later. And then the vanishing point is still pretty thick by fountain pen standards, um, but the thinnest of these three. So this is a 12.5 millimeter barrel. In terms of weight, the Dialogue 3 weighs 47 grams. The Curidas is the lightest at 24 grams. And the vanishing point is 30 grams. Like I mentioned before, all of these pens are capless, uh, but they take different approaches to that mechanism. The Curidas and the vanishing point are both click activated. So it's a very quick, you know, one-handed operation. Though I'll get to why the Curidas is different. Um, you'll notice that the click travel is a lot longer than a vanishing point. And the dialogue is just a simple half turn. And it's fully closed when the lines line up on the barrel. Of course, if you watched my dialogue 3 video, you will remember that. Because these are capless fountain pens, they all need some way to seal off the nib to make sure it doesn't dry out. The Dialogue 3 uses a, what I call a ball valve mechanism that slowly twists open to reveal the nib. It's pretty good. I would say it's the second best out of these with the Vanishing Points uh, spring-loaded trapdoor as first. And the Curidas is uh, also trapdoor, but this one, instead of being spring-loaded, has a weird pivoting living hinge, is what I'll call it. It's a single piece of plastic, 
and it goes around and you see it goes down into that little thing on the outside of the barrel. This one has the worst seal out of the three um, because it's not a real spring. It's just a piece of plastic that's thin enough that it can bend. However, it's pretty cool to watch through the barrel. Um, and I'll get to that later. This pen is ridiculously over-engineered, but not necessarily in a good way like the dialogue is. <laughs> These pens all use the same kind of nib unit um, system where you have the nib, the feed, and the converter filling mechanism all as a single moving piece inside the barrel. Um, the Lamy Dialog 3 obviously uses Lamy's you know, standard cartridge converter and their standard uh, nib shape. The Curidas has a lot going on here. So you might not be able to tell, but there's actually a full-size platinum converter under here. But you have to unhook that if you want to get in there. Um, and then this is another little weird sliding piece, and it's there's just a lot. It's just a lot going on. And then to reassemble it, you got to put it in that certain way, I think. Anyway. The Vanishing Point uses the Pilot standard cartridge converter, um, which you know you either love or you hate. I I tend to hate because <laughs> the the Con Forty is just a garbage, just a just a piece of garbage. In terms of nib options, the Dialog Three comes in extra fine through broad, including oblique medium, oblique broad which is pretty cool. Not a lot of brands do obliques these days. And it is 14 karat gold. But you can also put the uh, any, any Lamy nib. So you can put a steel nib, but it will come with a gold one. The Curidas comes in a steel nib. People originally thought these were going to be uh, like pilot preppy nibs, but they are. They're similar. They're just a lot smaller. Um, and they come in extra fine, fine, and medium. And finally, the vanishing point the Vanishing Point nib units come in extra fine through 1.0 stub, which is pretty cool. Um, and they also come in a couple different color options. So this is the rhodium plated 18 karat gold. There's also a black ion coated 18 karat gold and a just yellow gold, 18 karat gold. So for this writing sample, I'm gonna start with the Curidas. Um, all of these pens have extra fine nibs. Um, and they're all using Waterman Serenity Blue for the best comparison possible. Let's start with the Curidas. So the Platinum Curidas. I think I may have just spelled Platinum wrong. That's embarrassing. It's an extra fine steel nib with Waterman Blue. I was surprised about how much I like this nib. Um, I bought this pen to review it, honestly. Um, but once I tried it out, I really enjoyed it. I think it's a very fun sketching pen because it's got good flow, a little bit of toothiness, but generally it's, it's good control. And combined with the relative good uh, capacity of the platinum converter, you can write for a long time. I'm sure you can hear that that feedback there. So, cool pen. Next up, the Vanishing Point. I've had this one for a while. Um, this is also it's an 18 karat extra fine. So, Pilot. Fine, 18K, Waterman Blue, you get the deal. So, as much as I like the Vanishing Point, and my opinions have changed over time, I used to not, the nibs have always been a kind of point of contention for me. I've never had a Vanishing Point nib that wrote perfectly out of the box, which kind of sucks for a, you know, $150, $200 pen. This extra fine does write pretty consistently in every direction, but it's kind of scratchy, even more so than the 
extra fine steel nib, even though it's wider and wetter. Um, I've heard the fine nibs are good. I, I do actually, I have a fine nib that's all right. Um, but I don't know. I, I could really go either way on this one. And finally, the Dialog 3. Also an extra fine. Also with Waterman Blue. This is the 14 karat gold extra fine. So this is my favorite nib of the three. Um, and I promise, you know, I'm not just saying that because I worked for Lamy. This is just my favorite for writing of the three. Um, it's definitely the thickest, um, but it has a kind of an innate line variation and a really nice bounciness to it. But the downstrokes are fairly fine. I would say like a Japanese fine. And then the down, the cross strokes are about a Japanese medium. So it's like a very subtle architect point. Very smooth, very well adjusted. Just absolutely lovely. Cool. So for this next part, I'm going to be evaluating these three pens on the basis of a couple different attributes that I personally think are really important. One of which for a capitalist pen, I think a capitalist, the idea behind it is that it's a very practical version of a fountain pen. So which of these three do I think is the most practical? For me, it's the pilot vanishing point. It's got the convenience of the knock and the metal construction that I like about the dialogue. But it's, it's, you know, it, it, it's kind of a middle ground. It's a solid everyday carry pen. It seals reasonably well. I feel comfortable having it in my pocket. And it comes in a lot of finishes. It's not the most expensive pen. So, you know, if you were to drop it and lose it, uh, it wouldn't be the end of the world. And if you dropped it, I mean, you'd probably be good. It's, it's a full brass body. Um, I've actually, I've dropped this one right on the knock. See that ding there? Um... But yeah, even though it's not actually my favorite of the three, it's the one I'd say is the most practical for everyday use. The dialogue is a little bit too heavy and it's kind of hard to open with one hand. You can do it, but not in your writing position. It's also heavier, the clip doesn't spring out as wide, um, and when it is pocketed, it sits out you know, from about here in the pocket. Otherwise, I think it's really classy. Like if I had to bring a pen to a formal event, it's the dialogue three. The Curidas is interesting because it really is a budget model capless fountain pen, but it has a couple features that just I don't get. First of all, the size. It's gigantic. I can't fit this in any of my shirt pockets, and even if it did, it sticks out a good, you know, inch out of your pocket, which is just not a good look. Furthermore, the length of the click makes it so that even if you, like, wanted to open it with one hand you couldn't because I mean I have big hands and I have to I have to do like weird gymnastics to get my fingers around this thing um it's kind of disappointing now let's talk about build quality obviously these are pens made for different markets but that doesn't mean a cheap pen can't be built well and vice versa for an expensive one um, my winner for this one is the Dialog 3, and that might not come as a surprise. It's, you know, it's a expensive German pen. It really should be perfect. And to me, it is. It has a really intricately designed mechanism. It's understated. Like, it doesn't look like a capitalist pen. It doesn't really look like anything. It's, it's so understated. Um, and the materials and finishes are, I think, really artfully chosen. I love these little pinstripes and the fact that they have a functional effect. And then the sandblasted clip on this dialogue looks really nice. There are, of course, other dialogues in different finishes, but this one's my favorite. The reason why the Vanishing Point doesn't win is because, honestly, I think it is one of the most popular, ugliest pens on the market. And you know what? Flame me in the comments if you disagree, but nothing about this pen's design visually, to me, makes any sense. There are these little gaps in between each of the part breaks, the clip has nothing to do with the rest of the form. It has a weird attachment point. These little bands bother me because like there didn't need to be this break in the barrel. I think it just kind of breaks it up, which is otherwise a pretty smooth design. And then the knock scratches itself over time. This, you know, was super shiny at first and as you click it, it's going to scratch itself. It also 
frustrates me that this replaced a much more beautifully designed pen. Uh, the Vanish the Namiki Capless from the 80s and 90s was this beautiful, very streamlined, you know, look it up and drool over it. I used to have one. Finally, the uh, Curitas, I think is, I mean, it, it does what it does in an interesting way. Um, and by that, I mean, it is getting around pilots patents in a really creative way by having a hundred million parts. And then I'm sure the designers were like, we did a lot of work. We want you all to see it. So even if I don't think this pen is really at all attractive, it's actually quite ugly. It is really cool to be able to see all of the little parts working inside. Even if that means you have to have this weird, horrible bump that I hate because I think that's just a really clumsy solution. And also, it's a plastic pen. Plastic pens crack and break um, much more easily. I cracked the tab on this, removing the clip, and that's a thing that they recommend you do, or allow you to do, I guess. They even include a little tool. But I cracked it anyway, even though I followed the instructions. I've also heard a lot of reports of the feeds cracking. Um, that's something that's currently being investigated into. I, it hasn't happened to mine. I sure hope it doesn't, because... I've already got one crack in it, but otherwise I don't, I, I wouldn't trust this pen in my pocket, even though it's, it's kind of an everyday ish sort of pen. Finally. And, uh, the one that I'm sure many of you are wondering about is the price of these pens. Now I didn't exactly remember what I paid for these. So I was looking them up at MSRP and I noticed a funny thing. Each pen costs two times more than the one before it. So the Curitas retails for $80 in the U S the vanishing point for 160 and the dialog 3 for 320. So it's pretty, you know, interesting progression of prices. Like, would you rather have four Curiodas's or one dialog 3? Or, you know, or two vanishing points. So I think that's, you know, just interesting to bear in mind. Obviously that changes with different finishes. Um, I've heard rumors of an expensive version of the Curiodas coming out eventually, um, though I don't know now that the feeds are breaking, who knows. There are about approximately 100 million different finishes of the Vanishing Point available. There's also a steel nib version, which is also like $80, $90, but you can also get one with uh, Arushi and Radin on it for like 700 So yeah, there's a lot of options with the Vanishing Point, which I think is cool. And then the Dialog 3 technically has eight options, really only has four, which are the matte black, piano white, piano black, and uh, palladium. There's also the Arushi ones, which you can get in a set of four for $25,000. So um, have fun with that. Well, I hope that was helpful, informative, and at least a little bit entertaining. These are all pretty cool pens at different price points. Um, you know, kind of a beginner, mid-end and luxury versions of the same general idea. Um, there are, of course, other capitalist pens on the market, but they are all kind of pushing the, like, $600 mark at least. Like, Stipula makes one and Visconti makes one, but those are all way out of my price range unless somebody would like to send me one to review, and I will absolutely append this video. Anyway, I'm really glad to be back and reviewing pens again. If anyone has a pen they would like me to review and that I own, I will review it. If not, I will tell you. But leave some suggestions uh, if you like this kind of comparison style video. Um, if you want me to do more vintage pens, I've got some cool new ones. Otherwise, yeah, thanks so much for supporting me, even though I haven't uploaded a video in four months. But uh, look forward to more. Thanks so much, everyone. See you next time.